Goodbye F1 2019. This video will be pretty much the final video I'll ever make on this game because the new game literally comes out in six days time. Obviously 2020 comes out, well the Schumacher edition comes out on Tuesday and the actual normal game itself comes out next uh, Friday. So I've um, pretty much decided that today this will be the last ever video of F1 2019. I'm going to talk about a lot of things, talk about my memories with this game, talk about what I enjoyed, what I didn't like about this game and just overall where this game stands as far as how good this game actually is compared to last year and all the other games before it since, uh, since F1 2015. But before we go into the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for future F1 2020 videos starting pretty much on Tuesday night, so that's when I'm going to be recording. Monday night, Tuesday morning, and then I'm hoping to get a video by probably Tuesday morning, maybe, hopefully 11 o'clock. I'm going to try and do an all-nighter, maybe, if if that's even, you know, possible for me anymore, since I can't barely do all-nighters anymore. You know, I'm getting old. Your boy's getting old. <laughs> but if I can try and do an all-nighter, I can try and get out a couple of videos, maybe edit maybe one, two videos, and then have a couple of hours sleep, and then just really go ham with F1 2020 content. And by the way, the gameplay that you're seeing in the background is some online lobbies that I did uh, last night with my boy Kimmy the Iceman. <laughs> you might have, you might hear him in this video, but he's a cool guy. Um, but yeah, F1 2019, wow. I, I honestly don't know how to feel about this game, if I have to be uh, completely honest. Like, from a career mode perspective, this was probably one of the hardest, most enjoyable career modes, like career mode series that I've done so far ever since I started doing you know, career mode series on the channel from F1 2016 onwards. I pretty much did a whole series based on Williams and literally it was hard. It was really hard to try and keep pace with the AI's upgrade development. Like it was ridiculously OP how, how quick the AI were to upgrade the car and just the gap, like if you if you watch the second half of the series, you'll just notice the gap between Alfa Romeo and literally everyone else, like from us and Ferrari. It was just ridiculous how quick their car got, but we we managed to, to keep pace and somehow we managed to get a car for the second half of, the, of season three. Pretty much season three, the first half wasn't really our car was wasn't really that good, and then the second half of season three we we managed to turn turn things around but as far as the career mode we actually saw the first time ever of um, F2 drivers and an F2 uh, F2 storyline which was actually really which was really good with Lucas Weber and uh, Devin Butler though those two won't be in F1 2020 anymore which I'm a little bit upset about well, I'm not upset I'm, I'm, I'm not really asked to be honest but just the whole story intrigue was really good really enjoyed doing those uh, free F2 cutscenes and it was actually something different instead of you know choosing your character picking your team and then going off to the first uh, practice session like nothing's ever happened now you had to try and literally win the uh, the F2 title and um, probably the biggest thing of this year's career mode was the driver transfers and I still don't understand why they didn't promote it why they didn't put a trailer for it I guarantee you if they would have announced that driver transfers was in F1 20 uh, 2019 career mode you would have seen maybe a lot more pre-orders or maybe a lot more buys considering the fact like i don't really understand why they didn't promote it because it was this big feature that we've been wanting since f1 2010 driver transfers was the biggest thing excuse me the biggest thing that we wanted in in the f1 games ever since they moved to the current generation consoles and now literally the fact that they have driver transfers in and they literally never even advertised it, never even promoted it, and the only time they did promote it was when they did a little uh, blog post talking about the career mode, and yeah, oh yeah, we got driver transfers in, by the way. Like, how do you not promote that? How do you not promote a feature that big to the point where it's literally a, a, a mode changer for most? And I think this career mode is def has definitely been more enjoyable than 2018 by far just because of that feature. You know, Lewis Hamilton, for example, he went to Williams, no, not Williams, he went to Renault, 
which is which is crazy because he'll never he would never go there in real life. But I really enjoyed the um, the, the the driver transfers and overall just the journey that we that we were from season one and then eventually in season two being in the midfield, you know, and then season three, which we started to get a race winning car and then by literally the end of the season we was able to pretty much win the championship even though we never won the race in Brazil we were able to pretty much win the championship there and it was a very enjoyable series um, the, the views even some of the views on, on these videos man literally the first couple of the first couple of, of videos that I did look at it, the creation over 1000 the beginning F2 beginnings video 1.2000 the first career mode video with Williams, the first race, 6.7 thousand views. That's mental. And even if we go past that, literally the, the career mode opening cutscene that I released a year ago, nearly 40 thousand views. Jesus Christ. And then I was like literally averaging what, a thousand views per video? What, the Bahrain 1.4, the F1 1000 race, oh god, literally. Oh mate, this, before the patch, before the patch the AI were broken in the, in the rain. Like, I was on 101 AI difficulty, and the fact that I was able to finish 5th in a Williams in Season 1 in the rain was, that was, that was really cool, but at the same time, it was like, what the hell? What's going on? The Baku video, 750 views, the last minute puncture, oh god, I was in a points playing position, and I got a last minute puncture on the final lap, over 3,000 views. Screen glitch, Grand Prix, I think after that, we didn't really get, um, another... A video that got into uh, the thousands you know Hungary season 2 you know the 60 play script penalty then the whole 2021 series pretty much leading to the championship and yeah from a creator standpoint it was a real good series to to create and just do just because there was a challenge there and I had to get this done and by far F1 2019 career mode was definitely Definitely the most enjoyable career mode of of the entire series. This game was also the final game that I that I did league racing on. Pretty much a couple of weeks ago, I announced my retirement from uh, league racing with the RFL Brazilian Grand Prix. Pretty much, um, and just my pace on this game, I feel like I this this game, like handling wise, is the best handling that I've that I've ever felt on a wheel, like ever. Like I didn't know like the big steps that they would take from 2018 to 2019 and the fourth with like right before the patch remember like before the patch when the game came out for like two weeks and then they brought out a massive patch like the get like the handling didn't feel as what how can i say more like grippy more like you couldn't feel much but once pretty much the patch came out you could literally like feel so much and like the force feedback and the weight of the wheel was ridiculous and I just feel like this game I had like probably my best pace on any F1 game two victories in a season six podiums one pole position <laughs> yeah I, I definitely think that this game was probably the best game I had for league racing even though I never won anything I won two races six podiums and just some really fun battles in in, uh, in RFL uh, this season but obviously times changed uh, and yeah, pretty much I left I've left RFL and I don't plan on doing any more league racing ever again to be honest. I think the whole I think the whole generous or the whole opinion on league racing is that I feel like league racing is ruining the F1 games because you can't put any effort in. Like what I mean by that is you can't casually play the game once or twice a week and then join online racing and expect to be competitive. You know, like, the level is now so high now where you literally have to sweat the game out every single week, doing around about 100 laps of practice, changing the setup every single day, doing race pace and then online lobbies with, with the people that you're racing with, only for um, the actual race day to be taken out first lap if you have a good qualifying. Even then, you know, you can't guarantee if you're going to finish in a good position because the driving standards in this community have significantly dropped. Like, the respect in, like, just normal racing 101 you know and battling like don't get me wrong it's not all of them like some of them uh, like i've had amazing battles with and they know who they are and i'm not going to say who but they know who they are but just most of them in the community are just like literally i, I can't be asked with it anymore 
just can't be asked. Yeah, just having a great battle and being just punted out wide or taken out. And the stewards as well, just not getting anything done for that. And uh, there's no point in me trying to put effort in into something I'm literally going to get no reward in. So I feel like for F1 2020, I'm not going to focus on the online side of things. I'll still do online racing and stuff, you know, but I won't do, you know, league racing anymore. And I just, I don't really find... I don't really find that game or that side of the game as enjoyable as it used to as it used to be. So to pretty much round out this this uh, this video, let's talk about the um, the customization in F1 2019. Obviously, this was the game for the first time that in history you could customize your own Formula One car with your own race suit, your own gloves, your own helmet, etc. etc. But it, it pretty much wasn't though. I think. Well, I think we kind of knew this from the start, but we didn't really want to, you know, believe it at all, or we, we were just hoping that we would have more, but, you know, at the same time, you've got to start somewhere, right? Um, at first, I was a little bit disappointed, the fact that we didn't get full customization of our cars, that we could only change, that we could only change the, 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 the livery color, and I thought, that's a little bit dull to be honest and not just that you know just for not, not only the car liveries but also the race suits as well you couldn't even change the color of the gloves that was just a little bit of a piss take to be honest and but yeah obviously you've got to make a start and i think we all knew that this was only the beginning of the customization which is now launched into my team which now we get full customization of sponsors of the livery of, of all that stuff and I literally can't wait for my team because now this has literally been a two year thing from having our own spec car to literally having our own mode. Like, I can't believe this happening. For the first time ever, we're getting an actual manager career mode in, in, in F1 games. Like, considering with FIFA and NBA, they've had this stuff for years. Like, Cody's have been a little bit behind and they still are behind with, with 2K and EA and, and other sports gaming companies like that when it comes to customization. But I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to F1 2020. I think 2019 has been the best game of this generation. I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like the first half like of the game, I, I think online, it was probably the best online experience I've had. Literally little to no lag at all. No bugs, no glitches. It was probably the smoothest gameplay online that I've felt ever in, in the history of the Formula 1 series. But ever since... Let's see what January, late January. Ever since you know lockdown happened and everyone's been forced to indoors, I think the online's been a little bit more rough, and lag has been a, been way more noticeable. But you know, I think my final thoughts, my final thoughts on F1 2019, as we as we literally are a couple of days away now from F1 2020, is that this game is better than F1 2018. A better handling model, I think. Better physics better gameplay even though there was a lot of wrong with the gameplay a lot of in track inaccuracy with the f1 drivers which has been fixed for 2020 the career modes much better driver transfers the online was better was i'd say like the first half was so much better than 2018 and obviously we got new modes obviously f2 for the first time ever the customization and I, I truly believe that the legacy of f1 2019 is that this game is the best F1 game of this generation, but is still not up there with F1 2013, and I don't know why. I might be classic tracks. I'm just hoping that if they just add classic tracks with everything that they've got here, then then that's it. I don't think. I do not think that F1 2013 will hold its crown as the best of all time for much longer if they do have classic tracks. Hopefully, Codemasters do. I don't know if they're going to implement it this season with DLC or next game. Hopefully, with the next gen consoles. But yeah, F1 2019 has been a fun game, and uh, yeah, it's been a fun and I'd say an enjoyable game. Yeah, that's the legacy of F1 2019. Thanks for watching, make sure to leave like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all for F1 2020 on Tuesday. Adios.